Dingai Fusion Records. Chapter 1. Prisoner. Jin Dynasty. Fourth year of Taiyuan. Period, first day of the second lunar month, Xiangyang. A sudden snowstorm swept through the thousand-year-old ancient city overnight. The cold wave froze all of the remaining few bright and warm lights in the city, and the only sounds that remained were the rustling of the falling snow and the crackling of the charcoal in the red mud stove. Outside the city, 200,000 Qin troops were assembled in a watertight besiegement. They were on standby, waiting for the final battle with the Jin troops defending the city to finally erupt. Chen Xing's vision went dark and he was quite anxious. He could have arrived earlier or later, so why did he choose to come right at this particular time? After exerting his utmost to somehow muddle his way into Xiangyang City, he now had to look for someone inside the city it was like finding a needle in a haystack. And even if he did find the one he was looking for, how was he supposed to leave the city tomorrow morning? Xiangyang City had been surrounded for an entire year and had long since run out of ammunition and provisions. Its foot soldiers were too hungry to fight, and its people were too hungry to flee, yet all of them still had the energy to curse. Currently, people's emotions were volatile and many were causing disturbances. After entering the city, it wasn't easy for Chen Xin to find Zhu Su, the governor of Liangzhou, and the one who was in charge of defending the city. He made his identity known to the other, but before he was able to explain his purpose for coming to the city, the governor had quickly summoned all the military councillors and generals under his command. In an instant, the hall was filled with people, some standing and some sitting as they waited for Chen Xin to speak. Repeat it once more, in front of everyone. What are you? Zhu Su asked. Dressed in a black robe, Chen Xing sat upright before him. He answered earnestly, EXX, OR OR, SIST. Zhu Su said to the crowd, he said he's a mage. Not a mage, Chen Xing explained patiently, an exorcist, that's the third time I've said it. The lights in the main hall of the governor's manor shone resplendently, illuminating his features. Chen Xing was dressed in black from head to toe, a stark contrast to his fair skin. He wore a brocade Han robe embossed with dark patterns and held a small, gold-plated hand warmer in his arms. A tiny medicine bag hung by his waist, and he wore a pair of cloud-waiting boots. His eyes were covered with a black cloth, while his pure, beautiful rosy lips and high nose bridge were left exposed he was a blind man. Let me introduce myself, my name is Chen Xing, the young man continued. The 481st successor of the Divine Land's exorcists and the only great exorcist left in this world. I'm 16 years old this year, 7 Qi 9 Kun, 130 Jin. I'm from Hans Hong, and also the inheritor of the exorcist's great undertaking in the human world. I came to Xiangyang for official business, and I hope to obtain Lord Zhu Su's assistance. Nyo, please take a look. This is a document issued by the Great Jin's Minister of Appointments, Lord Csian. The hall within the governor's manor was filled with people. All councillors whispered amongst themselves, and countless generals under Zhu Su's command all regarded this uninvited guest with suspicious gazes. Siadaran. The handwritten order handed over by the young man was passed around the crowd. Zhu Su hardly managed to catch his breath before asking, where are the reinforcements? I asked Xian for reinforcements, and he sent me a mage. What's the meaning of this? Chen Xing sincerely said, Well, I don't know about that. And I'd like to reiterate one more time I'm not a mage. After the whispering died down, the governor, Zhu Su's heart rate sped up as he asked the question that had constantly preoccupied him. Are you able to help push back the huge army outside the city? Chen Xing scratched his neck, thought about it, then answered, it's hard to say, depends on the situation. But it's most likely impossible. Exorcist, one of the generals who had been observing for a while spoke, can you scatter beans and turn them into an army? No, Chen Xing answered straightforwardly. Have you ever divined through the stars? Zhu Su asked. 
Can you command the wind and rain and help everyone in Xiangyang out of their dire predicament? Chen Xing. Chen Xing pointed at his blindfold as if saying, You want me to divine through the stars? I can only do that if I can see in the first place, B.A. Kid. Do you know any magic, or can you perform some kind of magic trick? Another general added. It'll be fine even if it's only just for show, as long as you do it in front of the people to give everyone the confidence to defend the city. Chen Xing's face had an innocent expression as he answered, scattering beans to create an army is just something written in books to deceive people. There's no such magic in the world. Well, at least not yet. AI. Zhu Su and everyone in the hall became disheartened. Governor Darren, Chen Xing said, the purpose of my trip here is to find someone. The crowd in the hall started to disperse. Zhu Su who thought he had caught a hold of his last straw, now answered insipidly, who is it? A person who is destined for me, Chen Xing said seriously. My protector martial god is in Xiangyang city. This person is extremely important to me, and to the whole world. Zhu Su looked at Chen Xing doubtfully. Chen Xing explained, this destined person has appeared three times in my dream, and each time was clearer than the last. From my latest dream, I'm very certain that this person is in Xiangyang City. As long as I can find him, I'll. Zhu Su felt like he had just seen a glimmer of hope, and his heart flew to his throat. You can help me break through the Qin army. Chen Xing explained sincerely, no. I'll leave without delay. Everyone's really busy, I dare not hold you up from fighting your war. Zhu Su. Please gather all of the city's able-bodied men in one place, Chen Xing continued. For my evaluation, for me to seek out this protector martial god. I assure you that this matter is of great concern to the millennial well-being of the divine land, you will not regret it. Zhu Su had wanted to say what kind of joke are you making? But this young man didn't seem to be lying. If he were really here to while his time away, he didn't have to enter the city at its most desperate time. Frankly speaking, Zhu Su didn't even know how he got into the city. Perhaps it was because he would be on his last legs in a few more days, or it was because the phrase Mill Nile well-being had moved Zhu Su, but in any case, hope was growing fainter by the day. At the very least, he had a document from the ministry in his hands. Zhu Su suddenly had an idea he wanted to see what kind of mysterious trick this kid was playing. All able-bodied men are in the army, Zhu Su said coldly. Look for him there, and we'll talk again after you find him. Two hours later, all the remaining 12,200 officers and soldiers in the city were called over and assembled urgently on the field outside the governor's manor. Many were even yawning. It was snowing lightly at dusk. A couch was placed in front of the entrance of the governor's manor. Chen Xing sat on that couch while looking down at the dense, dark mass of the crowd below engaged in spirited discussions, for the past several months, people had been in want of food from the beginning of winter. As soon as the army gathered, it was as if they had found an outlet to vent their frustration as they all started clamoring one after another. Silence. Silence. The chief general immediately reprimanded in a loud voice. Zhu Su saw that the situation seemed to be getting uglier, and a riot could even break out if it went on like this, so he hurriedly said, begin quickly. Chen Xing. Chen Xing raised his hand slightly, and it trembled a little before he finally put it back down. A military counselor from the governor's manor noticed this small detail and asked softly, you seem to be a little nervous. I'm not nervous at all, Chen Xing immediately refuted this allegation that harbored evil intentions. Not among these people. Chen Xing waited for a long time, but the guidance he expected never appeared. He listened carefully within that endless darkness, only the rustling of the snow could be heard. Heart lamp, quick, quickly tell me where the protector martial god is. I'm running out of time. The crowd was causing a loud commotion. Soldiers had gradually started to curse angrily, some even began demanding provisions. Suddenly, 
in the darkness brought to him by the blindfold, a light appeared in the distance. Found him. Chen Xing immediately got up and walked quickly towards that light. AI. AI. The generals who stood by Zhu Su and the others swiftly said in succession. Where are you going? Chen Xing passed through the first row of officers and moved hastily towards the east side of the field. Zhu Su could only walk down the stairs and follow him. Following that, the generals dismissed the soldiers and chased them away. When the crowd realized that it was yet another farce, they all sighed one after another and briefly cursed before returning to their respective homes. After leaving the field, Chen Xin turned to the direction of the governor's manor. He looked in all directions before going to the west side of the manor. What is this place? Zhu Su and a group of soldiers caught up with him. They lifted lit torches as they looked at Chen Xin. The dungeon, said Zhu Su. A white light suddenly lit up in front of him. It was nearer now. Open the door, Chen Xing said seriously. You can't go in. Inside is. A general wanted to stop him, but Zhu Su motioned for someone to open the door. Chen Xing, while still blindfolded, walked through the underground passage underneath the governor's manor. The dark passageway was lit by oil lamps. Chen Xin turned and headed directly into the deepest part of the dungeon. The light in front of him pulsed occasionally, just like a person's heartbeat. The entire room would shine brilliantly sometimes while becoming deathly still and dark at another. It flickered constantly in the deepest part of the prison. In the depths of the dungeon, eerie, white bones and the mournful wails of prisoners filled the prison cells on either side. From an iron cell at the end of the passageway, a low moan resembling that of a dying, trapped beast, could be heard. Chen Xing stopped right outside the last prison cell. He stood quietly across the iron grill partition. The prisoner was a man bound by iron chains. He was curled up on the ground and only wore a pair of tattered shorts. A moldy wooden basin was placed in front of him, and one could easily see the bottom of the trough, evidently, he had not eaten or drunk anything for several days. Now that the city was under besiegement by an army, it was extremely difficult even for the good people in the city to survive, so it was even less likely that someone would care for the food and water of a prisoner. The man had unkempt, disheveled hair that was let down, and his body was so skinny that even his ribs protruded outward. Whip marks could be seen all over his body, legs, and back. In the deepest part of this moldy and damp prison cell, he was already so sick that he could only exhale and not inhale. Although he could be considered a half-dead man by now, one could still tell that he had a tall stature even when he lay curled up. But his face was so grimy that his facial features could not be discerned. May I trouble you to please open the door? Chen Xing said. No. The registrar objected. Kid. You don't know this person's origins. He can't be let out. Chen Xing said earnestly, the heart lamp chose him. That's just fucking bullshit. A general finally couldn't restrain himself any longer and started cursing. Liar. Governor Darren, that man is a liar. But Zhu Su wordlessly motioned for someone to open the prison door. Chen Xing walked into the cell and knelt down in front of the man. The man was extremely quiet and motionless. Then, Chen Xing took off the blindfold that covered his eyes, a pair of clear eyes could be seen observing the man. Everyone. Chen Xing said to the man, are you still alive? The man's eyes were tightly shut. His forehead was boiling hot, but he was so cold that he constantly trembled and his lips had turned purple. The smell of rust permeated the cell the telltale lingering stench after diarrhea. Since he had not eaten for many days, his whole body had collapsed, and he was already on his deathbed. With one poke from Chen Xing, he instantly started gasping for breath like he had gone mad. Chen Xing immediately knelt down on one knee and pressed against his forehead with one hand. Soon afterward, that man opened his eyes, his lips trembling slightly. In the end, his eyes closed and he fainted. Chen Xing immediately motioned to his left and right, 
releasing the chains. He carried the man and soon realized that although this man was both hungry and sick, his body emanciated to the point of no longer resembling a human's, his body was still extremely heavy. He was nearly nine chi tall. Chen Xin couldn't carry him in bridal style, so he had to resort to piggybacking and half dragging him away. Help me out ah! Uh. Chen Xin frowned. Zhu Su and the rest looked at Chen Xin with a puzzled expression. He's pretending to be blind. The registrar said. He was pretending. He really is a liar. End chapter. Dingai Fusion Records. Chapter 2. First Meeting. After the time taken for one incense stick to burn. A huge quarrel had already broken out in the governor's manner regarding Chen Xing's identity. Everyone expressed that this young man's intentions were quite dubious and must be thoroughly investigated. Zhu Su said, the official document issued by Xia and can't be fake. What do you want me to do? A general said, just one document isn't enough to justify taking a death row prisoner away. He may be a spy sent into the city from the outside. Another person said, death row inmates are capable of committing all kinds of atrocities. Even if the city falls, we definitely can't let them live. In the guest room above the manor, Chen Xin placed the man on a bed and gasped for breath as he sat on the threshold. He wiped his face, went out to pour some water, opened up the medicine bag hanging by his waist, and took out a crimson pill. He pried the man's mouth open, but the man's teeth were clenched tightly shut and kept trembling, so he was unable to feed him the medication. Chen Xin pondered the problem for a long time and could only resort to chewing the pill, drinking some cold water to dissolve it, pinching his jaw, then forcibly feeding him through his mouth. Is it him? Chen Xin frowned as he studied his face and recalled what he had seen in his dream. Snow swirled everywhere in Xiangyang City. The building at the heart of the city was the governor's manor, there were no discrepancies there. The heart lamp had flashed three times just now the first time was to lead him to the dungeon, the second time was in front of the dungeon, and the third time was when he had stepped into the deepest part of the prison in the cell. What are your origins? Chen Xin wiped his face and muttered, Why are you the one chosen by the heart lamp? Someone outside was delivering a message, Zhu Su wanted to see him. Chen Xin had not finished arranging things on his side, so he wanted to ask Zhu Su to wait for a short while, but the messenger didn't leave and waited stubbornly outside the door. Chen Xin had no choice but to follow the messenger out in a hurry. The snow continued to fall. Zhu Su stood on the third floor of the governor's manor, overlooking the entire Xiangyang city. Chen Xin came up behind Zhu Su and faced the city that was filled with lights. In the distance, the faintly discernible music of a flute could be heard, as if the piper was currently weeping with sorrow. Explain it clearly to me. Zhu Su said, otherwise, I can't let you take the prisoner away, regardless of whether you're an exorcist or not. Chen Xin studied Zhu Su and suddenly asked, Lord, do you believe that there are gods and monsters in this world? Do you believe that I have magical powers? My guess is that you actually don't believe in it. Zhu Su sighed and had to admit, today's actions were only for show, to stabilize the morale of the army. Just tell the truth, don't lie anymore. Your real target is that prisoner have I guessed correctly? Who asked you to take him away? It can't be Xian. Were you sent by the Hu people? As he spoke, Zhu Su became stern again and enunciated each word clearly. Think carefully before you speak. Say one wrong word, and your head will roll. Even if the city falls tomorrow, I'm still the city master today, so I can behead you at any time. Chen Xing stared at the sword at Zhu Su's waist, then at his gaze. He knew that Zhu Su had begun to sense that something was amiss in other people's eyes, he was just a young man who was dressing up as a god to play the devil. Previously, he had worn a black cloth over his eyes in order to sense the heart lamp more acutely, not to intentionally deceive others. In fact, 
even Chen seeing himself never expected that the person he was looking for just had to be a prisoner on death row. Chen Xing answered, Okay, I'll tell you everything. If you want to take your sword out, do it after I finish talking. Zhu Su turned around and looked into Chen Xing's eyes. He said coldly, Speak. I'd like to see what kind of lie you'll fabricate. This story has to be told from the very beginning, and it seriously encapsulates the essence of how life is too short, it's a long story. Since the Lord Governor insists on listening to it, there's no harm in telling you anyway. There was mana in the world 300 years ago. Zhu Su frowned slightly. He didn't expect Chen Xin to start mentioning the so-called magic again. 300 years ago, there were monsters, magic, and powerful magicians in the world, Chen Xin just pretended like he couldn't see Zhu Su's expression. He walked to one side and began explaining slowly. In that year, Emperor Zhangdi of the Han Dynasty was in power, and Ban Chao was sent to the western regions on a diplomatic mission to settle a hundred-year policy in the western regions. Everyone lived a prosperous and content life throughout the Divine Land, Fangxi, warriors and Donchis were all flourishing professions. According to legend, the so-called Yao tribes were banished by powerful exorcists to the mountainous region with 100,000 massive mountains in the southwest of Yizhu and Yelang country. They laid down layers upon layers of enchantments to trap them until they perished on their own, so they could no longer meddle with affairs in the central plains. After the Yao were exterminated, only one mission remained for humans to seek immortality. The Fangxis believed that as long as one communicated with the heavens and earth, absorbed spiritual qi, and cultivated their magic, they would be able to live forever. However one day, all of the mana in the world disappeared overnight. It had completely disappeared without forewarning. All the magic weapons in the world turned into scrap iron within the blink of an eye, and all the sacred tools used to exorcise Yao's turned into ordinary weapons. Chance and all magic lost their effectiveness, ranging from strong magic that could move mountains and fill seas to small magic like five ghosts transporting fortune. No matter how you tried to activate them, they would no longer work. Gone. Chen Xin made a meaningless gesture as he faced Zhu Su, since then, there has been no mana in the Divine Land. This is what exorcists call the silence of all magic. Oh. Zhu Su's smile didn't reach his eyes, so, what now? Chen Xin said with regret, some people say that the Xian Gate that releases the spiritual qi of the heavens and earth had closed. Lao Zi once said, reaching from the mystery into the deeper mystery is the gate to the secret of all life. The people at that time thought that the spiritual qi in the world was released from the invisible Xian gate in the void of the heavens. They thought that perhaps, the disappearance of mana meant that the Xian gate had closed. Thus, they offered sacrifices to heaven, worshipped the mountains and rivers, and exhausted every means possible. But nothing worked. Fortunately, the Yao tribe didn't incite any large-scale insurrections. After all, in the years when exorcists were active, the monsters had all been crippled. In order for new terrestrial and aerial beasts to cultivate into Yao's, they had to absorb the spiritual qi of the heavens and earth. Without spiritual qi, they naturally had no way of inciting trouble. After all, only using up Yao energy to do bad things without the parasitic consumption of others' energy, expending energy without sustenance would be a very tiring affair. There are both pros and cons for the silence of all magic. Without monsters, there would naturally be no need for exorcists in the human world. However, the problem lay elsewhere Yao could not be cultivated, but it was not necessarily the same for demons. Demons are the resentment of the world. Chen Xin said, those who died under tragic circumstances in the world are resentful. All things are born in heaven and will return to earth, then enter the heaven's reincarnation cycle but their resentment can't be dispelled. To put it bluntly, the more people die during plagues, wars, and famines, the easier it is for resentment to gather. During Emperor Huey's reign, the royal Sima family vied for the throne, 
and a total of 800,000 people died in the civil war. Throughout the years of serious drought in Guangzhou plains, famine frequently occurred, and more than 2 million people died of starvation and illness. During the Yangjia period, Lu Yuan, one of the Xiongnu people, broke through Huaguan County and captured Luoyang, while Lu Yao breached the defenses of Chang'an. In Guangzhou, Guanlong, and other places, 1.8 million people died. The Jin people fled to the south towards Jiankang, but were wiped out at the natural Yangtze moat. Shi Li, one of the Ji people, subdued Jinyang County and its province, injuring and killing more than 2 million people. The Murong clan of the Xianbei people and the Jin general, Hong Wen, were engaged in a huge battle, killing 400,000 people. Xianbei, Xiangnu, and the Ji tribes wanton lip plundered the central plains. They never brought provisions along with them and called the Han people two-legged sheep that could substitute as military provisions along the way. The population of the central plains as measured by the Jin dynasty 20 years ago was 20 million. By the time Ranmin killed Jizhao, the population was recalculated, less than 4 million people were left. However, the good times didn't last. Ranmin city fell, and he was killed by the Murong clan. Jishao County was lost, and the people were slaughtered and had their possessions looted once again. Finish the calculation and remove the remainder. Chen Xing said to Zhu Su, then Lord Governor, there will definitely be at least 20 million. More than 10 million in this calculation are Han people who had died under the five barbarians' cavalry. Millions of who people murdered each other, which further exacerbated the birth of resentment. Even though he obviously knew that Chen Xing was lying, Zhu Su still fell into a trance as he listened and answered, the world is in turmoil, and a mortal life is as feeble as grass. Chen Xing said, if we trace this back to an even earlier time, when the Wei, Shu, and Wu families divided the land under the heavens, endless wars surged during that hundred-year period, and the number of those who died because of those wars numbered in the tens of millions. Thus, in the past 300 years, more than 30 million people have died in the Divine Land. The resentment of these 30 million people wanders between heaven and earth, never leaving, and has already far exceeded the limit that the Divine Land can accommodate. If it goes on like this, demons will soon be bred in just a few years. As for the origin of demons, I've never seen it before, the historical records about it are scarce. Putting that aside for now, I'll discuss the key points. Someone has to be prepared in advance and be on guard against the appearance of demons at all times. My ancestors were from Jinyang, and my parents died early. After the war between Fujian and the Murong clan in Huaguan County, I moved to MT. Hua. To live in seclusion. Chen Xin could still vividly recall the war nine years ago, even though he was only seven years old back then. His house had caught fire and was set ablaze, and his grandmother ordered a loyal servant to send him to an old friend and subordinate in the depths of MT. Hua to study the deities and stars and cultivate the magic of exorcising demons. In this current era where magic had been silenced, ancient texts that had been passed down through generations were now all covered with dust, and were no longer of any use. At the age of 16, Chen Xing had a dream he dreamed of a big city that he had never visited. After listening to this, his Shifu pondered for a long time and suspected that it was Xiangyang City, then told him that dreams were guidances from the heart lamp. His protector martial god awaited him in that city. He had to find his protector first, since he would only be able to complete his mission with the help of his protector. And thus, I came, to stand here before you. Chen Xing said in the end. Finished talking. Zhu Su slowly pulled his sword out, after waiting for so long, what I get is this absolutely ridiculous story you made up for me. Chen Xing did not retreat. He faced the pointed tip of Zhu Su's sword head on, placing his right hand on the left side of his chest above his heart. He then raised his hand, and a resplendent white light actually burst out from his palm, moving towards Zhu Su. Zhu Su thought that the young man was still planning on bluffing his way out, 
but he didn't expect the light to erupt out of nowhere and was instantly so dazzled he couldn't open his eyes. What, what kind of trick is this? Zusu gripped his sword and couldn't swing it down for a moment. This is the heart lamp. Chen Xing answered. Zusu was stunned. You are indeed, a mage, you can emit light. What's the use of this light? Chen Xing answered honestly, it has no use, all I can do is emit light occasionally. Zusu. Zusu became overly suspicious at once. Chen Xing shrugged helplessly as the light retreated, and he explained, I read the historical records and learned that a great calamity will befall the world. At the time when the Divine Land perishes, the Keeper of the Heart Lamp, accompanied by the Protector Martial God, will step out to exorcise demons. The sudden appearance of the Heart Lamp in this world means that the revival of the demons is imminent. I must find the Martial God, awaken his strength, and help the world withstand the calamity of Mara's descent into this world. Disputes between the Hu and the Han people are trivial matters. Once Mara appears, the entire Divine Land will be completely overthrown, all living beings will be annihilated, and the Earth will be cleansed and returned to primordial times. Everything will reset from the beginning. No matter if you're a Hu or a Han, no one will be able to escape. You, you, Zhu Su was momentarily speechless. Chen Xing said helplessly, I don't want this either, okay. Lord Governor, understand this a little, do you think I wanted to come to Xiang Yang? After my Shifu died, I quickly packed up my things, left empty. Hua, hired a carriage, and rushed to Xiang Yang. I somehow got onto a boat and entered the city without encountering any danger, came all the way to the city master's manor, and thought that this was indeed the place. Of all people, I had to be the one to inherit the great undertaking of unification and restore the exorcist profession in the human world, and I accepted it. But as a result, for some reason, the readily available able-bodied men were all ignored, and I had to go to the dungeon to find some guy who suffers from tuberculosis, and I'm still trying to figure out how to get out of the city. At this moment, the registrar delivered the register. Zhu Su sheathed his sword, accepted it, and perused it. The registrar, the directory of the prisoner's identities has been found, his name is Yang Shu, he's one of the Hu people. Zhu Su frowned deeply. Because of the emitted light, he believed in Chen Xing for now. Chen Xing pondered for a moment, then answered, whether he is a Hu or Han, isn't really that important to me. Okay, I'm really not very fond of who people. Well this will be difficult to deal with, but he doesn't seem like one. Ah, part of the who? Do who people have the surname Xiang? Which tribe? Zhu Su flipped the register to its last page, it was a supplementary page of the detention directory brought by the escort officer half a year ago. The first row of words suddenly came into view Yiren, Xiangshu. The registrar, in the first year of the Taiyuan dynasty, Jianwei Zhonglang had wanted to escort this man to Jiankong and behead him after interrogating him in detail. But no matter how severely tortured he was on the way, this man never uttered a word. The escort officer died from illness when he was passing through Xiangyang, so Xiangshu was imprisoned in the city. Their initial intentions were to transfer him to Jiankong, but he was momentarily forgotten as there were too many prisoners on death row. He has since been imprisoned. Half a year ago, innocent people were massacred in Guangzhou and were offered as blood sacrifices to heaven. Zhu Su said, a total of 2,000 people were killed, including both Hu and Han people. Men, women, old and young, and even domestic chickens and dogs were not spared. It took a lot of effort for my Jin officers and soldiers to capture him while they were embroiled in a larger battle. Zhu Su reluctantly believed in the matters regarding the heart lamp, but he had a new question, why would you choose this person? Chen Xing said in disbelief, why he was chosen? I don't know either ah. When Chen Xing heard all that, he instantly felt worried. Don't tell him that the light flashing before his eyes was a hallucination? 
Chen Xin took the register and only saw a few lines on it, Xiangshu, massacred 2,000 or more people, a Hu man, fierce general, speculated to be a military official, the tribe he belongs to is unknown, there's even such a thing. I've already fed him my medicine, and now you're telling me that he shoulders the lives of thousands on his back. Chen Xin said. Didn't I tell you not to free him? Zhu Su said, change to another 1BA. Chen Xin said, can this be changed? It can't be a. Wait, I think I'll still have to, give this matter further consideration. I'll ask him in detail when he recovers, what if he was wronged. Chen Xin felt ill at ease and turned around to hastily leave. Zhu Su frowned deeply. He turned around to look down. From the manor at the northern part of the city, he gazed into the distance beyond the city walls, a dense mass of troops from Qin country in the far north covered the entire expanse. At the same time, in the guest room of the governor manor, that man suddenly gasped heavily and returned to life. Chen Xin returned to the room, closed the door, looked out of the door, then looked back at that man. He's alive now. What do I do? Do I have to strangle him to death? But no matter what others say, he should at least be given a chance to defend himself B.A. And he's my protector. Chen Xin had already treated this man named Xiang Xu as my thing, so he can't strangle him to death. He made up his mind to ask him again when he was able to speak. So Chen Xin prepared a basin of hot water to help him wipe his body. Your name is Xiang Xu. Chen Xin observed the man's face and muttered, A who man? The man had a high nose bridge, deep eyes, and distinct facial features. His features were sunken because of how thin he was. His beard hadn't been shaved for a whole six months, and his hair was in a tangled mess. His whole body was riddled with scars they were all old injuries. Chen Xin only simply wiped him down, the rest of the cleaning could be done by Xiang Shu himself after he recovers. When he was wiping his body, Chen Xin realized that this person had slender fingers, distinct knuckles, long limbs, huge feet, and his legs looked very sturdy and strong. My family's protector looks like he's very good at fighting. Chen Xin was very satisfied. Chen Xin retrieved a silver needle from his medicine bag and inserted it into an ache appointment at his waist. The man suddenly opened his eyes. Chen Xin immediately retreated slightly and raised the needle up to his nose to sniff it. You've been poisoned. Chen Xin said tentatively, I fed you a revival pill. You won't be able to move for the next 12 hours, nor will you be able to speak. At this time tomorrow night, your body will return to normal, and you'll be able to gradually recover by eating something when the time comes. The man's eyes remained open as he stared at Chen Xin. His eyes were very bright but possessed a dangerous gaze reminiscent of a beast. Chen Xin turned his head slightly sideways, frowned, and thought about the words of a left protector. You're the one chosen by the heart lamp. Chen Xin said, from this moment on, you're a protector martial god. I'm the great exorcist named Chen Xin, courtesy named Tian Qi. But I've heard that, you've killed a lot of people? Is that true? No matter what you did before. Chen Xin thought for a bit and said reluctantly, if I hadn't saved you, you would not have survived after the city falls in a few days. That's something you should know B.A. You can't do anything to me. The man couldn't speak. His gaze moved elsewhere. Chen Xin pulled the blanket over, covered him with it, and tucked him in slightly. He wondered if he should just trust this person up along with the blanket first, just in case this man is a homicidal maniac who would explode right after the medicine loses its effect, he wouldn't be easy to control then. If that really did happen, then he would be the first exorcist ever to be killed by his own protector. That would be too stupid. But after repeatedly ruminating over it, he was this guy's benefactor after all, and this guy doesn't look like a rabid dog, so he ought not to personally hack at his benefactor, Chen Xin yawned. He was really too sleepy. He sat at the table and leaned on it, turning his head sideways to look at Xiang Shu. 
after leaving MT. Hwai half a month ago, he traversed through land and water to get to Xiangyang, which was surrounded on all sides by the Qin army. He used a lot of energy just to get into the city, and after several days of anxiety and fear, he still had to think of a way to leave as soon as possible. Chen Xin was truly too tired, he couldn't even summon the strength to find a rope to tie up this man named Xiang Shu. He had only wanted to take a short rest but somehow ended up falling asleep. He didn't know how long he had slept for when a loud blare startled Chen Xin awake in an instant. The Qin army is besieging the city. The city has fallen. Chen Xin was still in a disorientated daze when he stood up. A loud noise rang out outside, crying, shouting, and the cries of those engaged in the battle all resounded simultaneously. No way, how could it be this coincidental? Chen Xin immediately got up and went out. All he could hear were the shouts of people fighting and killing one another as they entered the courtyard. A fire canister whooshed as it sailed overhead and smashed into the roof of the governor's manor, which then burst into flames. When he went further out, he suddenly caught a glimpse of burning men and women on the street who danced about wildly as they rushed out. The city has fallen. A soldier rushed in and shouted, Leave. The governor has rushed to the south side of the city. He's confronting the enemies there. Go. Don't tarry. Situated in the north, the governor's manor was the first place to bear the brunt and suffered consecutive attacks by the enemy's cavalry as soon as they broke through the city wall. End chapter